quick video here. Uh, we've got Dermot Campbell Lendrum, who's from the Public Health and Environment Department of WHO. Um, it's been pivotal actually in providing a lot of the research that we brought to the messages we've had this week and the climate change and health agenda. So Dermot, tell us about um, what work you've done in the past and why you feel it's really important that health is at the centre of this treaty this week. Okay. Well, I've been working on climate change and health for about 10 years now. WHO has been working on this issue for about 20 years. But I would say it's only within the last couple of years that we've actually started to get very serious about what we actually do about climate change. We're spending a lot of time telling people there's a problem. It's only very recently that the, the interest has come from the health sector, basically, to say this is a problem we actually have to address. It's not good just talking about it, we actually have to act. And so one of the very positive uh, things that's happened in my work in the last couple of years is that we're actually able to come with much more positive messages than we've in the past. I think the penny has finally dropped amongst health professionals that the kinds of things we need to do to protect people's health from climate change are the kinds of things we need to do to protect people's health anyway. And so in poor countries where we're not talking about a separate agenda for saving, saving people's lives from malaria and responding to climate change, um, it's the same bed nets to save people's lives now that will also make them more resilient to climate change in, in the future. It's the same water and sanitation programs to save lives and, and now and improve resilience in the future. But I would say that the most positive uh, message that we have is that many of the things that we need to do to, um, to cut greenhouse gas emissions we have significant public health benefits. And there's new research coming out that the, the, the kinds of gains we would expect to make in terms of reduced deaths from air pollution, um, if, we, if we move away from fossil fuels, or the, the kinds of benefits we would get from providing opportunities for people to live and cycle to work, um, would actually, those health benefits would actually pay for um, quite a lot of the cost of mitigation. And the, one of the, the most encouraging things we've started to see in, in, in the last little while is actually the engagement of, of for example, medical students um, in, in acting on this issue. I, I think there's been a realisation of very good leadership from people like the Climate Health Council and the last the BMJ and so on, that if you are a health professional, then part of your duty is not just to treat the patient, but also to act on the And so the kinds of uh, things that, that, that we're seeing from, from medicine and, and, and associated organisations are extremely positive. And so we would, we would just very much like to encourage that.